Hello, and welcome to Our Lady of Perpetual Help Church as we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter and Divine Mercy Sunday. We welcome all to fully participate in this celebration. Let us pause for a moment to reflect on how God is currently working in our lives. Thank you. This Mass is being offered for Patricia Malik, Eugene Plotz, Antonia and Eugenio Diaz, Tom Kendall, Rosemary Collins, John and Mary Lysi, Nancy Nija, Paul Diamore, Gilda Renzulli, Jean Crow, Alexandra Antonis Lingus, Leonardo Potorosi, and Barbara Mackey. And this Mass is being celebrated by Father Nick. Let us sing together our opening song, Sing with All the Saints in Glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are triumphantly risen from the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day, they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now, for a little while, you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that is perishable even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him, now yet believe in him. You rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst. And he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. and Bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. 
Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written, that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A great deal has been written over the centuries on Thomas and faith. But I'll tell you something, the more and more I sit down with this Gospel, the more I let the words wash over me, the more I think that what's going on here is something much simpler than a man who is being tried in faith. I think Thomas is a man whose feelings are hurt. Think about that just for a second. Here he is, one of the twelve, the closest circle of our Lord. And he's not with them when this wonderful, miraculous thing happens. And he comes back and the disciples are overjoyed and they're reporting that they've seen the Lord, that he's risen from the dead. And Thomas says, no. No, I'm not going to believe that. Not until I see him myself. Not until I put my finger into his side. What's going through Thomas? What's going through his mind? Maybe the simple question of, why wasn't I included? Why wasn't I here? Why would our Lord appear to all of his other friends? Am I somehow less important to him? It's an interesting idea. And it's an idea that runs through all of our minds from time to time, if we're honest with ourselves, with one another. Have you never been in a situation where a close group of friends that you are normally a part of does something without you? Do you feel the pain as a result? It's a very simple thing. It's a very hurtful thing. I think Thomas in this moment is simply revealing his humanity. He wanted to be included and he was left out. When our Lord does appear again and Thomas is there, he rectifies the situation by saying, look, here it is. Here's what you wanted. Here are my hands. Here is my side. Put your finger. Believe. Know that I am risen. Know that I love you as well and that I never stopped loving you. See, Thomas's doubt, Thomas's lack of faith is not so much in his Lord as it is in himself. He doubts that our Lord loves him. He believes that because he wasn't included, there's something about him that's off. And rather than face that reality, what he does is he reigns on the parade of everybody else. But he was wrong. He was wrong. The reality was our Lord was risen from the dead. The reality was that life had triumphed over death, over darkness. That our Lord brought that message to his disciples. And even though Thomas wasn't there, he meant it to be brought to Thomas as well. It's important, friends, that we recognize the humanity of Thomas. That we see ourselves in him. And that when we realize when we doubt ourselves, when we find ourselves unlovable, we're believing a lie. Our Lord has risen from the dead. Our Lord brought us into existence. Our Lord gives us his own life through the sacraments of his church. That means that we are loved. And in that love, friends, we find the strength that we need to live the life of a Christian, which is not always easy. To deny ourselves what needs to be denied. To live heroically for Christ. To be sacraments and icons of God in this world. The only way we can do that, do that effectively, do that well, is if we are secure in our own sense of self-worth. If we know that our Lord truly is risen from the dead and that he rose from the dead for you and for me. That everything we just celebrated, the passion, the death, the resurrection, that whole drama of our salvation, it unfolded and it took place because Thomas, because you, because I am loved by our God. That's where we find strength, friends. That's where we find peace. That's where we find joy. And even in these uncertain times when we're locked away in our own rooms, we should recognize the fact that Christ is still risen and that his love for us can transform all of this into the joy of union. Union with him. Time alone with him. Prayer. Spiritual reading. 
all those great, wonderful spiritual practices that the church has always put before us, now is the time to redouble our efforts in all of them so that like Thomas, we can see and we can believe. Believe in God, believe in Christ risen from the dead, and believe in ourselves because the life that is Christ's is also ours. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. For the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the Good Shepherd, let us pray to the Lord. For the whole world, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For our brothers and sisters who suffer, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness which no one can take from them, let us pray to the Lord. For our own community, that it may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For all of the sick of our community, those ill, those suffering, those in need of knowledge that God loves them, those whose names are known well to God, let us pray to the Lord. For all of our beloved dead, let us pray to the Lord. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you, and receive the prayers of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. And let us sing together, O sons and daughters. Said my peace. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and my rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and when we drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. Again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen.
May he, by whose redeeming work you have been received into the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. And let us sing together Song of the Risen One. He is not here, he has been raised to new life.